celebrate today the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. The Mass today is said, oh, 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 oh. what does that mean? That means that the Mass is said for all your intentions, whatsoever they are. We have also today the visit of a priest from Kenya who is in my confession, confessional, hearing confessions for you. Father is going to address you after Mass, asking for your support for his mission in Kenya. So that will be a second collection after Mass. We are today the Mission Sunday for the whole diocese. You saw in the bulletin, I have to repeat it, but we have in starting September, when one month, the Mass on Thursday will be at noon. Theological classes are going to resume this year. We are going to wrap up the introduction to the devout life in one of the lessons. And we are going to start apologetics this year. Apologetics is how to defend our faith. So, what topic will be given at each class and discussed. This time as well to sign up for the catechism classes given in the Institute in Concord. And set the date for September 14th, our next fundraising dinner. We will be able to see in the back, there are some pictures of the camp that we just had with the kids. And they are all available on the website of the Institute. I think we have something like 780 pictures to look at. We had 2700, 2700. Just a selection. The Father and the Son of the Holy There were ten, and only one, and even a stranger, came back to give thanks. I would like to take the opportunity of this parable to speak about gratitude. Gratitude is a wonderful virtue, not cultured enough anymore. It is a lost virtue somehow, because it is always, always hard for all of us to say these two little words, thank you. How many times do you have to repeat to your children, what do you say? Say thank you. Again and again and again. You know, gratitude is part of the virtue of justice. It means that in not something that we can do or not do, gratitude is something that we have to get to do is an obligation in justice. We have to be able to say thank you. We owe gratitude at the very same moment as we receive. Somehow, it is the same concept that we all understand very well. When you go to the grocery store, and you get some apples and some gallon of milk, you don't go out without paying. You pay for it and you give it to the right price. And then you go. A little kind of gratitude indeed. Since it is a matter of justice to pay our debts, as a consequence, if we do not, if we forgot to be grateful, we owe reparation, restitution. Now, and that's one of the tricks with gratitude. The obligation to be grateful 
and to express our thankfulness is always real, but rarely measurable. It is easy to know what to pay for quantities like a pound of apple. It's according to the market price. But it is not so when it comes to a service that you have received. A gift, a smile, an act of kindness. How do you repay for that? How can we get back these things? If you think technically we cannot, we cannot get even. And there is another point that's beautiful with the virtue of gratitude. We understand that there is an obligation to get even. We just saw that at the same time it is quite impossible to do so. As soon as you say thank you to somebody, as soon as you show your gratitude, through another act of kindness. By the same token, you create, you create the obligation to be thanked in return of your act of kindness. I say thank you, thank you for your thank you, thank you for your thank you, thank you for your thank you, thank you. And that's fantastic because our world, our communities are just a big thanks, a big act of gratitude. And we don't know how to give thanks to each other. And that's a kind of competition. And our world becomes good. And that happened because we are created at the image of God. And God is giving us so much. Let us now consider our ten neighbors. Only one comes back, we saw that. The others are blamed. And it seems somehow a little bit unfair. Because after all, these nine neighbors who had faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, they came to him and they prayed. And Jesus give them a strict order, very straight, go show yourself to the priests. And they go, even though nothing happened at that moment. That pure faith, the lepers are still lepers. And at the word of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, they go away to show themselves to the priests. Show what? They don't know yet. And the millions of them, probably, they find themselves pleased. You can imagine the joy. They say, okay, now I get what Jesus Christ wanted to do. I get what he wanted me to see, to show to the priest. And they go. They continue to go to the priest. They fulfill the obligation that has been asked for them. And they are blamed for it. Why did they have return? The Samaritan, the contrary, disobey. He don't go, he doesn't go to the priest immediately, but he comes back to Jesus Christ and lays on his feet, on his, on his feet, at the feet of God, Jesus Christ. He returns. What I'm trying to say, or the parable I'm trying to say, that gratitude, even though it is a part of the virtue of justice and ruled by obligation, gratitude is not at all a pure obligation. It goes way beyond obligation. We cannot pretend that we have said thank you enough. The things that you receive are way above what we can pay, so to speak. What did we receive actually? 
our life. How are we going to pay for that? How much are we going to give to God? And not only, only our physical life, our spiritual life, the seven sacraments that are given to us all the time. And everything that we have, our clothes, our houses, our families, our friends, everything is a gift from God. Everything is an occasion for us to be thankful. And that's the whole point of the letter of St. Paul that is difficult to understand. He says so. Don't stay at the level of the law. You'll go to show yourself to the priest later, but praise God. Give thanks to God all the time. And that's what we do at Mass. Eucharist means thanksgiving. May the Blessed Virgin Mary help us to understand this necessity. May she help us to give thanks. Because if we think that we already have given thanks to God, let's open our eyes and understand the fact that we are barely started to do so. Amen. Father and the Son.